this is the resonance lab and if you're watching this this is probably because uh, flash is not working on your computer but you'll be able to do this lab with uh, I'm gonna just walk right through this lab so anyways um, the first thing you want to do is click on the ruler uh, right here and you should notice that the bottom line lines up with the bottom of this box one all right uh, next up we're just going to uh, click on and you're gonna describe right now for question number one uh, the motion as you can see once we click it on we're gonna let it run for about five seconds or so and so you can kind of see how much it moves all right um, we are gonna click right back here and let's take a look at so describe the motion and then uh, we're gonna drag the ruler and line up for zero centimeters so um, and so that you can actually answer the second part so first off um, we're gonna move this ruler up to here and the goal right now is that you're going to measure uh, how what's the displacement now this bottom line was the bottom of this box now what we can do is we can actually slow this down a little bit and then we can just hit pause and we can kind of drag this down it's about right there now I'm gonna step it and you can see it's already going down so that was probably about the max height that it hit and you're supposed to take a measurement so you can see uh, this is five centimeters and it's 10 centimeters right there so you can count one two three and hopefully you guys can read a ruler and know what's the measurement there um, so uh, that answers what is the maximum displacement of box one so how does box one's uh, maximum displacement compare to the 0.5 centimeters the driver pushes the spring so the driver here and if I push play is only moving 0.5 centimeters but you can see this is a little bit more than half a centimeter which would be just a little bit like that right so uh, that should help you answer question number two All right for question number three how does box one's maximum displacement compare to 0 0.5 centimeters oh yeah I think we answered that question right alright so anyways uh, for number four change the amplitude to one centimeter so we're gonna now just change this to one centimeter and there we go and here's one centimeter and uh, let's see how much our displacement changes when we do that so okay I'm gonna just get it to right around here I think it's still going going down all right there it's still going up 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 so right there and then now it's going down so that that was probably around the highest point right there and so you can kind of get what that is so um how that's how much the maximum displacement change when you double the amplitude so we went from 0.5 centimeters to one centimeter so this driver now is pushing a greater distance and you can see the displacement uh, increased okay next up we're gonna change the amplitude from one centimeter to two centimeters so that's the maximum so we're just gonna hit play here and it's still on slow mo but we can see that it's definitely going higher we can also go to normal speed and this just gives us a little bit less time it takes to hit the maximum height so all right and okay is it coming down it's coming down so I want to get it when it's going up yep, still coming down maybe this is why we need to Go to slow. Going up, up, up. So we can see that it's going up and going 
up still. And it's right around here is where it seems to hit its peak. I'll drag this up a little bit more. And then you should be able to read there that it's above 30. Um, looks like about eh, a little over 31 there. So um, from that, you can figure out uh, what is uh, the maximum displacement um, when the driver is quadrupled. So when it increased to two centimeters. So uh, from that, you should be able to answer the question of how does what is the relationship of the driver's amplitude to the displacement. So in other words, how much this moves when compared to how much this moves. And that's basically all we're changing when we're changing the amplitude is how much this driver is moving. Okay, uh, next up, we're gonna uh, slide this uh, to slow. And then uh, let's take a look at how the driver is moving. So we're in slow motion, let's slow it down even more. All right, so let's compare when it is at the highest peak, what is the direction of this driver as it hits the highest peak. In other words, is it moving up? Is it moving down? When the box hits its highest peak. All right. And then vice versa, the next question is asking when the box is at its lowest peak, I mean lowest peak, the trough, I guess, but the bottom, um, What? how is this driver moving? Is it moving up or is it moving down when the uh, box is at its lowest point? Okay, so that answers uh, questions seven and eight. All right, and you can always rewind back on the video if uh, you know and pause it or slow it down um, if you need more time to look at it. All right, uh, now we're gonna slide the sim speed to normal and we're gonna change the frequency to two hertz. And so we're going to go to normal speed. All right. Uh, and we're going to go to 2 hertz. Actually, I'll go 1 hertz. I'm going to keep this playing. And then I'm going to just, you can see it's bouncing around. And then I'm going to hit it to 2 hertz. Now you can see that the frequency at which this driver is moving up and down increases. So there's it's now going up and down 2 times per second. And what do you notice about the displacement here, or how much the box moves? Okay, and then the next question, it says to change this to 6 hertz, which is the fast, the highest frequency at which uh, we can do. We're going to hit enter. So it's now moving 6 um, times per second. Uh, this uh, driver piston is moving up and down and you can see the motion of the box there. All right, so this, um, this uh, answers question number 10 when we changed it to six hertz. Uh, when we had it two hertz, you can see what happened. And then uh, you're supposed to see what the relationship as we increase the frequency and it's further from the resonant frequency Resonant frequency in this case was 1 hertz. That's when you saw the most amount of displacement. Uh, you can also see what the frequency is right here. Uh, so given that the mass is 2.533 and it has a spring that has a constant of 100 newtons per meter, then this is the frequency. All right. So we can see at 6 hertz, that's, very f that's the furthest we can get on this machine from 1 hertz. And you can see how much motion there is there. Okay, so we're going to turn off the driver and we're going to change the frequency back to 1 hertz. So we're going to hit off. I'm going to just go to 1 hertz, hit enter. Okay, and then uh, next up, I'm going to um, change the resonator to 2. And so I'm going to go to here and I'm going to add another box. And this one's going to be number 2. Um, now, I need to change it to 2, so I want to change box number 2. And box number 2 has a different spring. You can see it's a little thicker. It's a little uh, different red, I guess you can see here. Uh, and we want to make this box, which is right now smaller than this, 
We want them to be about the same size, so we're going to change this to 2.533, okay? And uh, with that uh, done, we hit enter, and now these two boxes should be the same size, all right? Um, when I did that, though, you can see the frequency has now changed to 1.225. Now, um, before, when we were doing it, you should have noticed that it was at 1.5 hertz, okay? So uh, here we were supposed to have it at 150 newtons per meter, which we have right here. And then uh, this was originally uh, 1.5 hertz. But uh, when I changed it to increase the mass from 1.3 something to 2.533, uh, you can see what happened to my resonant frequency. So that's what you're supposed to answer here in the box right here is what is the new resonant frequency? And in this case, it should be 1.225, right? And then for number 13, how does increasing the mass affect the resonant frequency? So, um, so when I increased it from here to here, what happened to my resonant frequency? It went from 1.5 to a new resonant frequency. So just answer that question and how what changed when I increased the mass. Now we're going to change the mass until the resonant frequency is 1 hertz. And what is the mass that will allow us to have a, the same resonant frequency as box number 1? So right now it's 1.225, so I'm going to increase it and you can see that the resonant frequency is dropping the resonant frequency that being here and we're going to keep doing this until it is at one hertz and there it is at one hertz okay and so you can see it is at 3.8 kilograms and that is what is going to be um, the mass uh, that's the mass that will allow it to have the same frequency. All right. Now we're going to turn on our machine. And you can see they're both moving the same way. But oh, what's happening to 2? How's the displacement of 2 compared to the displacement of 1? So I'm going and going and going. and So um. So you're supposed to compare the displacement of 2 to 1. Now they both started where the bottom of the boxes were lined up here, but um, you can see that 2 is now behaving differently from 1. All right, And so, um, so you're going to describe how much the displacement of box 2 compared to box 1. And then um, answer this question on why. How is it possible that this heavier box, which should be harder to move, um, would be able to be moving what seemingly is faster than box number one? All right. So I hope this helps you, and this lab is easy peasy. All right. Take care.